Prakas made us from stone to protect Gurdalgaard. Against orcs, ogres, and all the other beasts of Tior. We are the guardians of Gurdalgaard. We are the children of the Divine Smith. We are the Dwarves.
Gizelbert I and I, the father of the Fifthling clan, has not been on the front line of battle against the creatures of Teon for many cycles. The king surveys the battlefield and the defenders with a grave expression. We are too few. This you know as well as he does, but there will be no reinforcements arriving. Hundreds of brave warriors lie inside the fortress dying. The illness is running rampant. It brings weakness and death. Stay at your posts. Be as steadfast as the granite of which we are made. Nothing can break us. Vrakas is with us. Die! Ah! 
that for fracas! <laughs> yes? Hammer time! These are the ones who attacked us in the tunnels. We suffered great losses beating them back. Here and I'll split you like a straw, you treacherous elf! In his fury, the old king radiates a ferocious power that none of Citalia's children could withstand. But the slight, willowy being sitting astride the Shadow Mare just grins down, mockingly. You are mistaken. We are Alpha. We are here to destroy the elves. All peace-loving beings here in Girdlegard are under our protection, and you cannot open the gate that has barred your path into Girdlegard since the creation of the world. Not us, but perhaps one of your kind. You fool! Fracas, forgive me for what I am about to do! <laughs> Quickly! In formation! You must hold them back until I close the gate! <laughs> Look at me. I am Syntharas, the Reaper of your death. I will take your life, and the land will take your soul. Get out of my sight, pointy ears, and let me delight at the closed gate a little longer. The gate may have closed, but when you rise again from the dead by the power of the land, you will be one of us, and you will open it. Never! My soul belongs to Fracas. No. Your soul now belongs to the land. And henceforth you will belong to it forever. Now die. And return. Then hand us Girdlegard.
You're a perfectionist, Tungdo Bolifar. I've got a reputation to uphold. If you can't rely on the metalwork of a dwarf, what can you rely on? What can I do for you? For me, nothing. It's Lot Yonan. He wants to see you in his study. In your mind, you go through all the recent incidents that might have annoyed the Magus. Apart from a few little squabbles with his family, nothing worth mentioning happened since the incident with your beard. You nod. Okay. I better not keep the Magus waiting. See you later. There's goulash for dinner. Hey, groundling! Come to the kitchen, we need you! Jollison, a fourth degree famulus and your favorite foe among the students of magic, gives you a disparaging glance and disappears without waiting for your reply. Deal! Quick! Or the goulash will get burnt! You immediately recognize what the problem is. A chain running over a pulley for positioning the cauldron is detached from its mounting and the cauldron stuck in the fireplace. It's a heavy load and none of the famuli, who feel superior even during kitchen duty, dare do anything. They might burn their fingers or even get a bit dirty. It'd be a waste of goulash. And I'm hungry. Here, hold this. You damned freak! For a moment, you hope the Famulus really does raise his hand to you. But then he comes to his senses and leaves the kitchen, his face bright red. What a pair you are! Vegetables, bread, cheese, but the cook is not to be trifled with. Many painful knuckles have taught you that she knows how to handle her heavy wooden spoon, and that she may possibly have eyes in the back of her head. Do you know what Lot Yonan wants? The maid gives you an amused look. She has often accused you of making things more complicated than necessary. I should speak to Lot Yonan first. He doesn't like to be kept waiting. You mumble and wonder when you started speaking thoughts like this out loud. Master Lot Yonan, Frala told me you wished to speak with me. Ah, Tungdil, come in. Uh, there is a bag over there in the cupboard. Take it out, please. It contains artifacts belonging to my former Famulus Goren. I wish to return them to him. He's in Black Saddle, 300 miles away. 300 miles? That's a long journey. Who are you going to entrust with this? I was thinking of you. Me? There is no one better to take on this journey. You have acquired much knowledge. You are almost a scholar. You know more than most family about Girdlegard and its inhabitants. It is time for you to go out into the world and see it with your own eyes. I... with pleasure.
Perhaps I'll meet some dwarves on my travels. Yes, perhaps. But don't hold out too much hope. And be careful who you talk to. Not everyone out there likes dwarves. Yeah, goblins. They abduct baby dwarves and sell them to magi, from what I've heard. Not the best bit of business I've ever done. But what was I to do? The long noses threatened to throw you into the nearest river. Be on your guard. Look after the bag and don't lose it. May Palandiel be with you. And Varakas too, of course. I'll set off immediately. I'll see you soon, Lot Yonan. You're about to dive headlong into your adventure, but then stop yourself. A journey over 300 miles without provisions and a weapon. I shouldn't forget to think in all my excitement. Hello, Frala. I need provisions for 300 miles. You're grinning from ear to ear. Finally, you've got the chance to see something of the world. 300? Tungdal, that's no errand. That's an epic journey. Wait, I've got just the right thing. But make sure the cook doesn't see. I'm going to Black Saddle to return a few things to a former apprentice in the Magus. You pocket the rye bread, sausages and ham. Enough food for the first few days of your journey. I've got a present for you. You take out a symbol of protection that you've carefully made from three horseshoe nails. It's not the finest jewelry in Girdlegard. One look at Frala's face makes it clear that it doesn't matter. She glows with happiness as she takes the pendant. For me? But why? Because you don't see me as an oddity and you're like a little sister to me. You could have said. But you settle with a shrug and a crooked smile. I have to go. I've got a long journey ahead of me. I wish you the blessing of Palandiel and Vrakas to protect you from all danger in your journey. Here, a talisman. Whenever you look at it, think of me. Frala winks at you mischievously. And of getting me a nice present. I wonder if dwarves ask Vrakas for help on long journeys. The figure on the homemade altar doesn't answer. <laughs> 